Welcome back to our video modules on statics. Now undoubtedly by now you've started to do a couple beam problems, you've started to try some of these things and fortunately you have uh, probably are coming across some just really basic supports that have reactions. They, they push up or they push across on what we're dealing with and what we'd like to do today is we'd like to take a look at those reactions and understand them in two dimensions. Take a look at some examples, take a look at what the symbols are so that we have a better feel for how they work. So let's start off with an easy one. Here we have our standard support and what this does is let's say you decide that you're going to put, uh, I don't know, you're going to put a beam on it, right? You can go like this and it's resting on there. Um, and you know, there's some other support here. We'll, 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 we'll give it the same, the same background. Now we know that this, for, and we'll say that the beam has weight, you know, it has some sort of weight pushing down. Now we know that this reaction point right here, we know that it's going to push up. However, in addition, let's say we changed the force so that now like, let, let's say the force is acting in this direction. We're going to, we'll, we'll take that one out. It's acting in this direction. That means it's pushing the beam down. Okay, great. So we have a force going up. We're just going to look at this one now. Let's ignore this. Um, the force is pushing up. But in addition, there's this other, this horizontal X component of the force. And this type of support will also react with a force in this direction. Not all, not all reaction points are like this. I mean, some of them only push up. Some of them, you know, don't, there's all sorts of different other options. Now let me show you one more thing about this one that's interesting. Let's imagine now that you want to lift this whole beam up. You're going to rotate it in this direction. This support will do nothing. So it will try and push, it will have a reaction vertically, it will have a reaction horizontally, but as far as resisting torque, resisting any type of torque, Nope, it can't do it. So we're going to take a look at, let's take a look at other types of reaction points and see what they can do. First, let's start off with the simple ones. The simple ones are going to involve something where you have just one force in a known direction. So let's take a look at this wheel rolling. So we noticed that, uh, let, let's watch it again. All right, so as that wheel is rolling, there's nothing trying to stop it. The only force is the force going vertical. Let's draw that out for a second. Here's that tire, and what we have going on here is simply a force going in the vertical direction. There is nothing going in the horizontal direction. It's not trying to stop it. It's just staying there. So in this case, we have one direction going vertical. I'm going to write down a couple other situations where we have the same situation. Sorry, a couple other reactions where we have the same situation. One force, one direction. Here we have some rollers. All right, so in this case, this is, this is almost exactly what the wheel is. Well, I mean, here it is right there. So we have rollers. And you'll see both of these used to show that we want force in one direction. Force in one direction. What does that look like? It looks like this. Right here, this is an example of force in one direction in our axes. Now let's take a look at a couple more examples. I've put another one down here. That is known as a rocker. And you can see it's almost exactly like a roller except it has this portion, whoops, this portion missing. So it's like a, a wheel, but you just have the wheel where you need it. That's known as a rocker. Um, let's pull up another one. Here we have something that we call a, uh, it, you'll see this symbol and it's known as a frictionless surface, but um, the symbol for the frictionless or for the rough surface are basically the same. Uh, so you'll just have to keep an eye out. It'll say frictionless surface if that's what it is. And finally, one of the other items that we can look at is let's imagine that right here, 
we have a cable attached to something. You know, we'll say to, uh, to, to, I don't know, something like this, some sort of pinned item that kind of comes around and is attached here. Um, any type of cable, while we, it is not directed straight up, what we do know is we know that it's direct, we know the direction of the force. A cable cannot apply a force in the horizontal direction or in perpendicular to its travel. So we know the direction of travel. And in fact, if you want to be careful, you know that uh, the, the way you're going to define this is we have a force and we know its direction of travel. We can always change our coordinate frame so we're going in the vertical direction. But we have one force, we know its direction of travel. Let's take a look at what happens if we have a reaction point that has two forces. Let's scroll down a little bit and we're going to keep that wheel showing because what I'd like to, to propose is that, that our wheel could also be two forces. Let's put it in park. In which case, if you push on the four, if you push on the car going this way, the wheel's going to hold it. So in this situation, it's just like this symbol right here. And in fact, it, it is that symbol right there. That's a standard support. And it looks, let's draw it here on the bottom. Here it is. Let's, let's uh, draw a line here so we make sure that we keep everything distinguished. And uh, what does that look like as far as on a coordinate axis? What are we looking at? We're looking at two forces, which looks like this. Here we are. We have two forces, one going up, one going down. Or another way to say it is what we may have is we may have a force in an unknown direction. In this case, we have two react, or we have at the reaction, we have two forces being applied. Um, another way that, um, another, how shall I say it? Another example would be a rough surface, and a rough surface. We're just going to take this same, uh, this same symbol right here, and we're going to put it down there. That is just a rough surface. We'll use that. We'll it looks the same, but you'll always see it in the problems. You know, such and such is on a rough surface. Well, now you know what that is. Okay, great. So now we've taken a look at forces, but we also have one further situation. Let's imagine that um, we also don't allow anything to rotate. Hmm. Now, what would that look like? That would look um, that would look something like this. It would look something like this right here, where we don't, we have reaction forces vertically, we have reaction forces horizontally, and we also don't allow any rotation. It would look like a basically a stick in the ground, and we'd call this a fixed support. Now, what I'm going to do on really on our next module when we go into three dimensions, I'm going to find all of these on a car. Now, that said, I do have one example of this on my truck. There we go. Now, sure, an antenna bends, right? But that's just because it's so thin. Let's imagine you're right down here and you're trying to move it. You're going to have a tough time. A, you're not going to be able to move it in this direction. You're not going to be able to pull it out. And moreover, you're not going to be able to rotate it out of the vehicle or rotate it in any way without, you know, of course, bending some metal. But then you're kind of changing the rules. In this case, we, in two dimensions, we have three situations. One is we have a single force or moving or acting at a known direction. We saw this with a rolling tire. The second situation is our rough surface. That is force in an unknown direction or two force component. The third one is two forces and a moment. Now what I'm going or and a torque. Now what I'm going to show you here is a little um, kind of summary sheet that I made up for this, so that you could see what all the options were. And I'll make this available um, in PDF format, so you have it as a reference. Here you can see that we have a vertical reaction. We have rockers, rollers are an option, frictionless service. Here you can see a cable. 
All right, so we, we covered that. We know that the force is going in that, that direction. Same with a shock absorber. As long as you have pinned ends, you have a shock absorber going in this direction. Now the collar, we the force is going in this direction and it can also spin in the same direction. Now this, this doesn't quite fit in here. It depends where, how you pull your torque because a collar fundamentally is a three-dimensional type of experience. So that makes it a little bit tricky to uh, make the assessment here, but we'll see that on our next video. We'll, we'll look at it uh, carefully, uh, at more accurately, I should say. A rolling wheel, one line of force. Now let's imagine two forces, a rough surface, your standard support, a stationary wheel. And finally, we have our, uh, our fixed supports. Uh, let's get that out of the way. There we go. We have our fixed support here, a stick in the mud. And that is constraining or that that is having a reaction in the vertical, horizontal and torques. Now we'll cover the next module is going to be on doing this in three dimensions. And then we'll take a look at a problem where we look at these and try to understand how to use them to solve systems of equations. Thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you then.